Hello, this is Paul from Fast Attack. In this video, let's prove theorem 5.2.4, geometric and algebraic multiplicity of eigenvalue. This theorem is important. It gives us uh, how to determine if A is diagonalizable or not uh, by using the geometric multiplicity. And we have two results, and the A says uh, geometric multiplicity for any eigenvalue is always less than or equal to, which is uh, no more than the algebraic multiplicity. Okay, geometric is no more than algebraic multiplicity. And the B says if A is diagonalizable, okay, equivalent to geometric equals uh, algebraic multiplicity. Um, I leave B for you to prove. Okay, it's not a difficult. Uh, just uh, use a uh, Theorem 5.2.1. Okay. And the theorem says uh, if you find uh, any linearly independent uh, eigenvector, then A is diagonalizable. See, if geometric equals uh, algebraic, definitely you will find any linearly independent uh, eigenvector. Now, let's focus on A. So, how to prove geometric is uh, no more than algebraic multiplicity. Uh, let's set up first. Let me say matrix A uh, is n by n. Uh, I pick one eigenvector, which is lambda zero, and uh, I say geometric multiplicity is k. Okay, and uh, geometric multiplicity then, so we can find a k linearly independent eigenvector, right? In the Arkham space corresponding to lambda zero, which is okay. See P1 to PK are linearly independent Arkham vector corresponding to lambda zero. Okay, so now what do we do? Uh, we need to prove geometric multiplicity of this lambda k, uh, zero, which is k is less than or equal to no more than at break multiplicity. Of course, now what do we do? We need to find the algebraic multiplicity of lambda zero. Okay, how to find it? Let's look at the complicated. Uh, algebraic multiplicity, okay, which is uh, I can value. I can value how to find by solving characteristic uh, uh, equation, right? So we need to find uh, the characteristic polynomial. Oh, this is complicated. We don't have any specific, and then we use the idea of a similarity. Remember, uh, if A is similar to another matrix like a diagonal, okay, then and uh, the uh, similarity invariants always keep it the same, right? Like a characteristic polynomial and the eigenvalue, a lot of uh, property keep the same between similarity matrix. So we just follow the same idea uh, of how did we diagonalize a matrix, okay? So let's uh, find another matrix similar to A, and uh, let's say B, which is uh, much more simple than A, and how. Uh, therefore, we need to find uh, another basis, right? A new basis, P, okay? So P transfer. Do the similarity transformation from A, we can get a B. Where is that a matrix P? Imagine the inverse of P times A times B goes to another similarity matrix. Okay, P, of course, comes from arcing, linearly independent arcing vector. Start from here. Hmm, but P is a, a basis. So we have to extend this K. Uh, linear independent vector into a basis. Uh, it is possible, right? Okay, so now let's extend it. Okay, so the original into a basis. Uh, let's say this. Yeah, and get, see, from the original, and then we extend it. And uh, we can do this, right? By like a plus theorem will end up for. So this is a basis. And this is the matrix P, okay? Under P, we can find uh, the similar matrix of A. Now we need to find the, the matrix, similar matrix. 
how to find the similar matrix, uh, similar matrix which is uh, inverse of P, right? Uh, time, so first, uh, let's define what is the matrix P, of course. We already have this. So let's say the matrix, which is a basis, a new basis, right? Okay. And then see, and this is the arcing vector we have. And it is uh, something new, okay, we extended. And let's cut into two, okay. Block uh, matrix, okay. He has P1, he has, this is P1, this is P2. Of course, the arcing vector should be column vector, okay. So we put together. Now, we can find the, sim the similar matrix of A. Uh, Inverse of P times A times P equals the similar matrix, right? So, inverse of P, we don't know. So, let's start from A times P. What this? Uh, of course, is this. Right? A times P1, A times P2. Uh, A times P2, oh, this is something new we don't know. It's okay, I'll leave it here. But A times P1, I know. Okay. I use. P1. I found this. Okay, so this is two, right? See, a times p1 is just equal to this. Uh, and then because p1 to pk is a vector, so we can use the definition and do change it to scalar multiplication. So okay, so this is the definition. And it is just the definition. Uh, and then the first, and each one we have a lambda zero, we can factor the lambda zero out. Therefore, here I will become a lambda zero times P1. Okay. Almost now. A times P should be equal to P times the similar matrix B, right? Okay, so we need to find a B. So therefore, we need to break down this one into this part. And then you know what this, this is P, right? So this is the matrix P. Uh, therefore, what do we have to see? A times P equals P times a similar matrix. What is the similar matrix? I think you can see the size. This is a one by two. So one by two, I have two times two by two, right? Uh, of course, we lock the matrix. So two by two. I don't know what that, but that's two by two. Okay. Mm, what the two by two? Just like this. And then we can do this. See, the first row is a lambda zero times p one. So the first row times the first column. We should get a lambda zero times p one. We don't need a p two. What do we need to put here? Zero. Okay. The matrix is zero. Okay, so here is zero. So after the first should be lambda zero, right? Of course it's not a lambda zero. Should it be a block matrix? Lambda zero times identity. How big is the size? Depends on how big is the K P one. We have a K columns. So these block matrix, okay, should it be K by K. This is our K. Uh how about the the second column does not matter, okay? I don't know what that is. So let me just simply say, there's a matrix B and the matrix C. Good. See, we do find what these matrix, these matrix should be the similar matrix we need. Now, almost we have the results. See? AP equals P times the similar matrix. So, a P equals P times uh, A prime. I just say A prime equals this uh, block matrix. That's the similar matrix we find that we need. And uh, from here, so what do we have? Uh, definitely we have, see, inverse of P times A times P equals inverse of A. And this means A is similar to A prime, similar, right? Good, so we reach our purpose. 
uh, original A is complicated and now A prime is a little simple than before because here we have a, a block and you see this matrix is like a, a triangular block, triangular matrix. Of course, it's simple than the original matrix A. Now, <clears throat> similarity invariant, remember? A is similar to A prime. Therefore, both has the same eigenvalue or the same characteristic uh, polynomial. Let's start from that. Okay, so that's true, right? Because they are similar. And then let me just copy A. Okay, so this one to here. Okay, so I copy the A prime here. Now you look at it. And uh, we do the subtraction. I have to break it down the I matrix into this uh, same structure. So uh, let me break, break it down in this. Is that true? Okay. It's the same, right? So now I definitely find uh, uh, the characteristic uh, polynomial. Now, the determinant, see. Okay, and this is the polynomial we need. So, uh, easy to see, this is a good. It's a block, a triangular matrix. Okay, therefore, uh, we have a property before is the determinant of uh, this one times the determinant of uh, this one, right? Yeah, good. We almost define it. And what is, and this is the uh, uh, characteristic polynomial, right? And we saw this equals zero. We will find out what the multiplicity of lambda zero. Uh, oh, uh, I can simplify a little bit. And here is a matrix, uh, diagonal matrix. So I directly get the result for the first part, case power, and then. Okay, so let's set up a D is equal zero. Okay, and this is the characteristic uh, polynomial, right? So I look at the multiplicity. Uh, what's the multiplicity for this lambda zero? It's already k. So the algebraic multiplicity at least k, right? And the probably we have a more solution of a lambda zero on the second part. Okay, therefore I can make this conclusion. Is that true? Uh, this algebraic multiplicity of lambda zero, which is the solution, the multiplicity of the solution lambda zero, of course, is at least k, right? Because we have something here, probably. And what is k? k is the geometric multiplicity of lambda zero. Is this the proof? Yes, so what do we get? We get a geometric multiplicity is uh, no more than the algebraic multiplicity. That's all. Thank you.